Heal the dogs. Tabletop RPG fundamentals. Oh my god, that was a cliffhanger. <laughs> what happened to the tree? <laughs> oh god, what did the tree do? <laughs> Subscribe. All right. Subscribe indeed. All right, thank you everyone for coming by. Really appreciate it. Hope you're doing well. And uh, today we're going to talk about not just an OSR game. We're going to talk about the epitome of OSR games. What does OSR he... mean, Heathen Dog? The old school revival? Thank you. Okay. I thought you knew. All right. But this is so, so old school that if you love Pathfinder, if you love Fate Core, if you love Dungeon Crawl, stop watching. Stop watching right now. No one wants to see your all caps rant in the comment section or in chat. No one wants that. I'm giving you the warning. Just get out. For everyone, there you go. For everyone who's brave enough to continue, then please go ahead and uh, subscribe, follow, like, all that good stuff, and uh, you'll get some more of this awesome uh, trigger warning content. Love it. Fame is much more ranting. Or he is ranting, just to show you. Rant, 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 rant. Rant, rant, rant. Like the penguin. Rant, 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 rant. <laughs> Okay, uh, after a couple seconds of that, we'll go to our details. Dungeon Crawl Classics. Original publication date is 2003, kind of. It was, it's not the same game, anywhere near the same game as it is now. The, the, uh, the printing I'm working off of is probably the seventh. Sometimes people say it's the fifth because they apparently didn't change some of the, some of the uh, copyright stuff. They just kind of copied and pasted it over to the seventh, but that's that's a whole different ball wax. It actually, uh, in its current iteration, its current form, it can be easily traced back to 2012. And the publisher is Goodman Games, and you can get it from Goodman Games, hardcover and PDF, for $39.99. Or you can go to Amazon and get it for $30.38 if you're a Prime member. If you're not a Prime member, it's $32.56, and you get the same hardcover and the same PDF. Hmm. So I would buy it there. <laughs> I mean, that's kind that of a no-brainer, right? Sense. Yeah, you're, if you're a Prime member, you're saving almost ten bucks. Or if you just want the PDF, you can save even more money and go to Drive Through RPG and just get it for twenty-five bucks. That's fine. It's up to you. Now, what are you buying? Now, oh, I'm going to tell you. Big book. Exactly. Oh, a huge book. It's five hundred and four pages. This thing's a monster. But my my initial. Uh, segment for all of the RPGs is an introduction to tell you about the world because usually in modern games they they have a fleshed out world with a backstory and they decide to tell you about it to help you ease your character into the game well this is an OSR game based on stuff from the late 70s early 80s so uh, none of that literally no introduction at all Page five goes right into character creation. But I was able to piece together some back world information from the appendices and well, the, the class and race descriptions did nothing because all they do is tell you how to role play your class or race. But the, the appendices were very helpful in, in telling me what kind of world we were playing in. So I'm going to go over that. And, uh, well, before I go over that, there is a test you have to pass. I swear to God, this is page three on the book. It is the player agreement. This is the, this is the you have to be in the right headspace to play this game. And if you can say yes to these, what, eight? One, two, three, four. Yeah, these, these eight tenants. Or actually seven. The last one is have fun. The, these, these seven tenants, if you can say yes to them, then uh, then you, you're you allowed to play the game. If not, it actually tells you to put it back on the shelf and walk away with uh, great celerity. As a matter of fact, go to the next slide and then you embiggen it so people can read it themselves if they want to while, while I'm going over it briefly. But uh, it's written in an old tiny whiny language because that's the way it is. And oh no, the, the next slide, go to the next slide as well. Not the, not the player agreement slide? 
the one after that is just this picture. Ah. So what it does, it tells you, okay, this is this is what you're getting into. All right. And the first thing, the first name drop is Gygax. All right. It says, uh, familiar with the customs of role playing, understanding the history of significance of the elder gods, Gygax and Arnson and in the cohorts, blah, blah. These are these are all these are all uh old school uh creators, artists and and whatnot of of some of the writer's favorite games. And then the next one is, listen, you're going to have a lot of dice here. Not just the D, D4, D6, D12, D20, whatever. But you're also going to get weird crap. Like, this crap's going to have nuts in it. Because you're also getting a D3, D5, D7, D... I don't have a D24. I have a D30. I have a D5 and D3. I'll, D24, I've never seen one in my life. But they exist. They exist. And there is a guy... Uh, uh, Zachi, Lou, Lou Zachi. He, uh, he has his own company and he, he specializes in creating dice that supposedly roll fairly every time. Don't ask me how I know. Sounds that. like a scheme do. to sell dice. It does. It does. Doesn't it? But his stuff has actually been tested. And whenever, it, whenever the test came back flawed, he would re-engineer the dice. I believe that. Make sure. It seems like, I don't see why you need all those different dice. Yeah. Seems like I don't a scam. know, but, we will get in that when we get into the system, All right. <laughs> which won't be this game, but you know. Yes. And then it it, it goes. Look, we can go to the next slide. It. Uh, uh, there are two references here, that that you have to you have to understand that are telling. The first one is the Gygax reference. This is referencing the fact that this game, is not is not going to be PC friendly because all of Gygax's stuff was very stereotypical. It was very speciesist. And that's just the way he built his fantasy worlds. That's just it. That's what happened. And the word adventure is said at least three times in this. And the reason for that is that you are not a hero. You are an adventurer. Heroes have plot armor. You do not. And this game is much more than the regular OSR game because you actually start out at level zero. You do not even get to be level one until you prove you're smart enough to not be dead game one. Which is a different mechanic that I haven't seen <laughs> pretty much ever. But that's the way that's the way this this particular cookie crumbles. Now, I said that I had world setting clues. And our next slide is going to get into that. Now, the first one is inspirational books. There's a laundry list here. I haven't read the vast majority of these. I've read, uh, where is it? Um, the, the, the Shadow People by Margaret St. Clair. I've read that. And I've read, where is it? Uh, not the whole World's End series, but I think one book of it. I didn't like it that much, but that's it. But there are two authors on this list that uh, everyone has at very least heard of Tolkien probably yes and Lovecraft and well, probably I was say seen, Jack Vance but yeah Lovecraft yeah and probably seen movies of and if you're if you're very lucky you've you've read these books and again this gives you hints as to how this world works first first thing the Lo the Lovecraftian horror genre it's going to tell you that this game is set in a world that the good guys don't always win that winning could be more costly than being defeated. And even if you win, you still feel like you lost. That's pretty much a prevalent theme in all of the, in all of the Lovecraftian writings. So this, this world's going to be hard. It's going to be dark. It's going to be dangerous. And it's going to be filled with things that defy understanding. Uh, originally, I don't see MRR Baker. I do see Michael Moorcock, though. Okay. Sorry. That's okay. That's fine. Now, the other the other clue is the Tolkien books. Okay, this is this is a Tolkien fantasy genre, meaning that uh, uh, not only can the PCs die because you have no plot armor. I mean, uh, what, what was that? What was that guy's name? Voromir, who died in the first movie. Boromir. Boromir. There you go. That was it. Yeah, he he was a main character. He bit it hard. You know, but also the the world setting it, it, because Tolkien, uh, no matter what his no matter what his writing flaws that you think he had, he built a world. He fleshed it out. 
made a language. Uh, he he gave he gave amazing descriptions of all the lands. They were they were separate. They were they were all built uh, uh, differently compared for their races. Their races were separate. It, it, they were all di- different sections. A patchwork upon the same world, but all of it fit together. All of it was was harmonious. So that's the kind of world we're looking for in this game. Uh, something something akin to Middle Earth. All right. So we have a setting, and we have a tone. Just just from the clues from the from what they tell you, hey, if you're going to play this game or you're going to run this game, you should read these books and you should, you know, take all of your hints from here. So that's good. OK, now let's move over to the actual play style of this and most OSR games. In current games, current era games, there is something called player agency where the player has a certain amount of control of the world that he's playing in. That the world just doesn't happen. Things just don't happen. He makes moves and he can alter the story. That's current games do that. This is not current games. All right. You are not necessary to the story. You are part of the story. You are a cog in the story machine. If you die, you roll up a new character and you jump in the story. The story is not hurt by your death. The story doesn't care about you. You should cry in somebody else's milk. No one, no one's going to help you. That all right. does remind me a lot of like first edition D&D modules where the yes. way it was set up kind of made you feel like, yeah, it's been there for a while. Uh, we've you cleaned out. That's great. And if you die, they don't care. So it yeah, seems exactly. like exactly. It's like oh, yes. the next group will be in. Right. And this is not meant to punish you. It's not. What it's meant to do is to is to take you off your pedestal and let you realize that if you are dumb, if you make stupid stupid moves or if you get unlucky, you will die. You should be smart. You should be careful. You should be wary. Question everything, think everything through, and you'll have a better time. This is called real role playing. You're putting yourself in your character's shoes. You you would not make stupid Rambo decisions. All right? You would be careful. You would not jump into into an arrow fight with no cover. No. You wouldn't do that, so your character wouldn't do that. So it's it's actually this mechanic is made to make you role play better. All right. Now, another thing is the world doesn't owe you anything. All right. The story always comes first. You are not the hero. I said that earlier. You're not the hero. You do not have plot armor. All right. You're a player, as in someone who is in a play. And as we know, Shakespeare said the the play is the thing. And that's exactly true, even for role playing games. You are there to help tell the story. The story is that the play is the thing. The story is the thing. As a player, you help tell it, but you are not integral to it. You'll be replaced, and the story will continue. All right. If you fail, if you die, it becomes part of the story. It doesn't stop the story, it doesn't wreck the story. It just adds more flavor to the story. Then you move on. All right. And the audience, the audience in this, uh, I'm really stretching the play analogy. Uh, The audience is everyone at the table, game master included. I mean, you're doing it so everyone can have fun. A rich story makes sure everyone has a good time. All right. Now, uh, this class race thing on our next slide, this little class racing, uh, it's all stereotypes, but they're there to assist you. They're not there to offend. They're not there to make you angry. Like, oh, this isn't fair. Oh, no, I, I want to play. I want to play an elf cleric. I, I, I want to play a dwarf wizard. No, these stereotypes are there to help you role play. These are what elves are like. These are what dwarves are like. These are what Warriors are like, play them like that or play another race or class. This, these are your options. All elves are stuck up douchebags. They are absolutely certain that they're better than every other race. They are all elves are like that. All dwarves are money grubbing fiends. 
They love gold, they love jewels, they love rare minerals, and they love rules. Stickler for the rules. As a matter of fact, if you are a chaotic alignment, you are banished or killed. Because obviously you've got some cross wires up here, and the whole dwarven race is better off if you were gone. All right. You have to role play these traits. If you don't role play these traits, you are by definition doing it wrong. Again, this isn't about you. Your character isn't the most important. You are part of the story. The story demands you role play your character. Trust me, if you follow these rules, you role play your character, you're going to have fun. That's it. Gonna have fun, I swear. All right, that was our introduction to Dungeon Crawl Classics. Now, uh, like I said, this thing's 500 pages long. So uh, dice system and combat might be two. <laughs> could, could be two uh, segments on their own. All right. Uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure I can get character generation to 30 minutes. I'm pretty sure. I haven't really kind of spaced, you know, timed it out yet, but I'm pretty sure I can do that. But the rules and system of play, this book is way too big, especially if I add magic in there, because magic is the main difference from what you're used to if you've played uh, D&D 3, 3.5, 4, or 5 or even AD&D or straight D&D, it is different. Not super different, but different enough to where it has to be re-explained. All right, sounds interesting. So, there you go. There is Dungeon Crawl Classics. Oh, it had like a I nice said, old school vibe to it. Yes, it does. The yes, art looks very Errol yeah. Otis. I appreciated that. <laughs> it's all of the art. Max Liao actually told me that... Uh, that uh, he has trouble taking it seriously. He wants to take this thing seriously, but he has trouble because the art is, seems really childish. I didn't get that. I, I got the art being as as simple. It looks like first edition D and D art to me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's 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 simple art from a simpler time, and that's what well, basically what's for. You know. Okay, but what did you think? What you what you think of this segment? What are your thoughts on OSR games? Are you a big fan of player agency or? Or do you want the, the, the game master to have uh, control over the story? Depends how you define player agency. I define player agency as players being able to, to change the story rather than the story you know, unfolding on its own. Because so I always thought of player agency is just the player keeping absolute control of their character. Like you can't say, your character goes over here or something well, like that. Well, that... That's just it. I mean, the p part of the story is your uh, is every character goes through adversity, right? Well, true. I mean, yeah, that's part of every story. Even if you're the hero, you go through adversity. But this is like you can die, and the player has no agency to stop that if they've made wrong decisions or just got unlucky. You're just going to die. Fair enough. Yeah. Or or be handicapped, lose an arm, like French, whatever. That was that's Doesn't still matter. funny. It's still funny, yeah. But uh, do you have any suggestions for my next RPG? Now, this is going to take a while, to be fair. But uh, I always take suggestions for my next one. So go ahead and uh, be the first one on there. And for, hey, first one's always sticking in my mind. So that's how it works. So thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Thank you, Heathen Dog. Remember, like, subscribe, share for more Heathen Dog. You can join for full streams of anime, comics, and games. May really chat and giveaways and monthly Q&As, Legion of Myth members, and accounts towards our Patreon giveaway goals. For more Heathen Dog, you can check out his anime on the stream segments, tabletop gaming fundamental segments, and team-ups on YouTube and Twitch. Selected video game streams are also on Twitch and YouTube, so please check those out. And remember, be a Legionnaire.